Hey, this is Coach Boyston, and today we're going to be looking at cells, and we're going to be diving down really deep into the cells, into the organelles, and what their jobs and functions are. I want to start this off, though, by looking at what are the two main groups of cells, or classifications that cells would fall into. The first one is going to be, if we look over here on the left, is prokaryotes. And in biology, when we talk about prokaryotes, we're talking about bacteria. If we slide over to the right here, we have our eukaryotes. And you'll notice underneath here I put animals and plants. Now obviously there's more organisms that fall into eukaryotes or this eukaryote group, but we're going to specifically be looking at the animal cell and the plant cell as we look at just these different parts and how they function within the cell. So let's get going. Uh, the first thing I want to look at here is this difference between prokaryote and eukaryote. All right, And the biggest difference is going to be if you're looking at these two here on the left we have a prokaryote and you'll notice the DNA right here that DNA molecule one unique thing there is it is not housed inside of a nucleus or a nuclear membrane if we look over here on the right you'll notice in this animal cell here we have our nucleus we have our genetic material right in here and it is actually surrounded by a nuclear membrane which is protecting it and so the biggest difference, when you're asked prokaryote, eukaryote, the biggest thing that needs to be said about that is eukaryotes have a nuclear membrane, prokaryotes don't. And so if we look back over here at my prokaryote, which is my bacteria, you'll notice we, it does have its DNA, it's not in a nucleus, and it has all these little green organelles. It doesn't have a whole lot of organelles, but it does have this specific organelle, and that is a ribosome. And ribosomes, we'll learn, uh, actually make proteins through a process of protein synthesis. We have talked about proteins, and we should all know that proteins are the building blocks for what an organism is. I am the way I am. You look the way you look. This bacteria looks the way it looks because of the proteins, proteins being made by those ribosomes. And obviously, it's the DNA that holds the code for what proteins are going to be made. And if we slide back over here to the right and we look at our uh, animal cell, which is a eukaryote, again, we know that the DNA is on the inside, housed in that nucleus, but you can notice there's a lot of organelles here. And these organelles do jobs for that cell, but there's also ribosomes here as well, which make proteins because obviously animals such as us, which we fall into the animal kingdom, all right, we need to make proteins or building blocks for us as well. And if we look up here at this word, I want to bring your attention to this. Um, you notice this EU here. EU actually means true. And so when you see eukaryote, we think of true nucleus. And so eukaryotes, DNA housed in a nucleus. Prokaryotes, no nuclear membrane. All right, let's go on. The first thing I want to look at when we're looking at eukaryotic cells is we're going to look at all the parts to the cell and we actually give these things a name. We call them organelles. And these are all parts of a cell that do a different job for the cell. Let me give you this example. I like to use this example here. If you look over on the right, um, we have obviously a human. All right, This human is kind of split up into parts, but a human. And you'll notice that we have organs. As an organism, we have organs, such as the heart here, which pumps blood for us, such as the lungs, which pulls in the oxygen, gets rid of the carbon dioxide. We have organs, and they do different jobs for us as the organism. And so it's really similar to, if we go back over here, it's really similar to what all of these, what we call organelles, do for the cell. And so I want to start on the outside first, and then we'll kind of start back in the middle and work out. So the first thing I want to look at here is on the outside. This little outer edge here is called the cell membrane, sometimes called the plasma membrane. And its job is to regulate what can go in and out of the cell. It also obviously separates the internal environment of the cell from what's on the exterior part of the cell. The other thing I want to look at here is this. We know the nucleus is here. If we look at all this other stuff in between the nucleus and our cell membrane, we will call that cytoplasm, sometimes called cytosol. And cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that's going to suspend and hold the organelles and kind of give structure to all that that's on the inside of the cell. All right, so you have cytoplasm, and then you have the cell membrane, which separates the outside from the inside. All right, so let's go back towards our middle of the cell, and let's go to that nucleus. We just talked about the nucleus has DNA, genetic material, on the inside. And the nucleus, or that nuclear membrane, is housing that. 
I also want to bring your attention to this little thing right here. Let's, let's take a look. This right here is the nucleolus. And what the nucleolus does for the cell is it makes another organelle, which is the ribosomes. So let's slide over here. Um, ribosomes right here. These ribosomes, if we look at this purple structure here, we'll talk about it in a minute. Every one of these little bumps on this purple structure, which is actually the rough ER, or rough endoplasmic reticulum, is a ribosome. And what ribosomes do, like we just talked about, is they make proteins, which is the building blocks for who we are, through a process of protein synthesis. And again, it's going to make certain proteins based upon the DNA from the inside of the cell. And that's why, again, you and I look different. It's because of my D our DNA is different, so we're producing slightly different protein structures. All right, so um, ribosomes, making proteins. And you'll notice they're here, and I call this the rough ER. And now the rough ER, the reason it's called rough is because these ribosomes on it kind of make it look studded or make it look bumpy. And so we call it rough ER for that purpose. And what it does is it helps make the proteins, but it also helps in transporting them. And so it kind of acts as a highway system through the cell. And we call it, with rough, we also have, let's slide over here, we also have right here what we would call the smooth ER. Um, smooth ER does make lipids, it does some other things. Um, the biggest difference between smooth and rough, though, is going to be the fact that there's no ribosomes on the smooth ER. The next organ I want to slide to, let's come right over here, is this one right here. This is the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi complex. There's different, it's like every single one of these has two names, right? Uh, but this is the Golgi apparatus. Kind of looks like a stack of pancakes, right? Well, Golgi apparatus helps some stuff with these proteins as well. What, they do, what it does is it repackages those proteins, um, resynthesizes them to either export them out of the cell or even redistribute them throughout the cell. And so it's real important in helping getting those proteins out of the cell to where they're needed in the body. So again, all those organelles I just talked about kind of help in the process of manufacturing proteins or shifting those proteins in or out of the cell. With all of these things going on, we've got to have something that powers it. Let's slide over here. Um, what we have here is the mitochondria. All right, mitochondria, which you see one here, and there's some others inside the cell. Mitochondria is what we call the powerhouse of the cell. It's kind of like the, the generator of electricity, right? And the way it does that is it assists in the metabolism of our food. It's going to produce this energy currency molecule called ATP, and we'll study that in a later video lecture. But ATP is, when I say currency, ATP is an energy storage molecule, and then when we need that energy, we can draw it from that molecule. And so mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell. Now, just like with any other system in our body, we've got to be able to get rid of waste. Let's slide down here and take a look at this organelle. This is what we call the lysosome, and we can see it right here. The lysosome is going to be an organelle, which is kind of a vesicle, and it has digestive enzymes on the inside, which allow it to digest dead or worn out organelles, as well as get rid of other waste within the cell. And so we have the organelles that help make proteins. We have something that gives power. We have the nucleus, which is the control center of this whole thing. We have the cell membrane, which houses all this and separates the outside from the inside. We have lysosomes that get rid of waste. Um, the last thing I want to draw your attention to, if we slide up here, is this thing called a centriole. And I'll just circle it here for you. Um, a centriole, we'll talk in a later video lecture on this process of mitosis, but uh, cells do divide and they replicate and they make copies of each other. Centrioles are going to assist in that process of separating out those cells equally. And so again, these are called organelles. Just like organs do jobs for our body, these organelles do a job or serve a function for the cell. Uh, the next thing I want to slide here to is the plant cell. And the reason I want to look at the plant cells, there's actually three organelles here that are slightly different than what we have in a eukaryotic animal cell. The first one I want to bring your attention to, if we look over to the right, is the cell wall. We saw that we had a cell membrane, we don't have a cell wall. Animals actually are one of the one kingdoms that don't have cell walls in their cells. Well, plant cells have a cell wall. It's a rigid cell wall that allows it to uh, hold its shape and protect the cell. You'll also notice that we have vacuoles, but they have a large central vacuole. And then the final thing is chloroplast right up here. Chloroplast, like this chloroplast right here, assists in a process called photosynthesis. 
Well, we don't do photosynthesis, plants do. So really one distinguishing factor when you're looking at cells underneath the microscope, you come across uh, these chloroplasts, um, that's going to let you know that that thing is a plant cell. All right, so again, the biggest thing we looked at today was prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And if you were asked what's the difference between those two, a prokaryote has DNA, it just doesn't house it inside of a nuclear membrane. Whereas a eukaryote is going to house that DNA inside of a nuclear membrane. And so eukaryotes have a nucleus, prokaryotes don't. So again, I'm Coach Boydston. That was just prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and just a journey through the cell. So I hope it was beneficial to you. Have a good day.